everyone, this is Katie from Katie Loves Classic Books, and I'm here today with my July wrap up. So, the first book I read in July was The Painted Veil by W. Somerset Mom, and this was published in 1925, and I gave this 5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. So, this follows a woman named Kitty Fane, and She's beautiful, but rather shallow, and she marries this man named Walter, and they end up living in Hong Kong. And this is not a spoiler, because you would notice from the back of the book, or even like the very first page, Kitty is dissatisfied in her relationship with Walter, and so she has an affair with a charming, yet also shallow, man named Charles Townsend. And when Walter founds out, his punishment is rather unusual. He is taking her with him to mainland China, to this village where there is a cholera epidemic. Um, and the story goes from there. And this is pretty much a story of Kitty's spiritual awakening, um, which was wonderful. And, and that aspect of it was not what I expected from this book. And that's why I ended up loving it so much. Um, I thought it had one of the best character developments I've read in a long time in terms of Kitty. Yeah, so when she goes to this village in China with the cholera epidemic, she she wakes up to so many things. She, she gains more compassion and insight into other people's lives. She does kind of start thinking about the spiritual dimension of life a little bit more. She starts to awaken to the real beauty in the world. She recognizes the fact of death and the realities of that. Um, and she, she starts to see Walter's point of view and feel compassion for him and to realize what his feelings are and why he did what he did. Um, yeah, and then even further on, she even, she really has so much self-realization. She just, she thinks about her childhood and how she was raised and how that affected kind of the shallow way she ended up living and why she married Walter and why she treated him the way she did and also maybe why she was attracted to Charles. Um, and there's even a moment of reconciliation with her father where she realizes that the way, like, her relationship with her father very much um, was what she was patterning after in her relationship with Walter. So, yeah, just she has so many realizations and she just wakes up. And you don't know where her life really is going from there. You only hope that she continues to grow. But it's this wonderful spiritual awakening that is so profound and important. Um, yeah, and so some people might think Kitty is un an unlikable character, but I liked her because even from the beginning I could understand why she was doing what she was doing, and then I was glad when she figured out why she was doing what she was doing. But yeah, for just character development, this book was great. And Walter was a character I really sympathized with. I felt so bad for Walter, and you so badly want things to work out with them, but people's feelings are what they are. and. Uh, yeah, that he was just such a good guy and you just wish Kitty could have, you know, the right feelings for him. Um, but I enjoyed him as well. In terms of the setting, that's the one thing um, that was kind of weird. Although I feel like it was semi-excusable. So it's in Hong Kong and then in mainland China. And this is not a good portrayal of China. So if you think you're reading a book because you want it to be set in China, like this is not the place to go. Um, I think I read that W. Somerset Mom just really, he had this idea for the story already and he just needed a good foreign place to set it. And then I think he went on a trip to China or something or Hong Kong or both. And, uh, decided that was a good place to set it. So this isn't a book about China, it's just kind of a foreign setting he decided on. And if you think about it like that, perhaps you won't expect things from it that it won't deliver. And 
I don't think there's anything blatantly disrespectful that the author meant disrespectful to Chinese people. I mean, they aren't mentioned that much, to be honest. And he does use what would now be derogatory terms. But I think in those days, that's just what they called them and they weren't thinking about it. So I don't think it was conscious. Not to, like, excuse him, but, like, I just don't feel like there's any ill intention in this book. It just kind of was like, that was just what they did at the time. And you just need a setting, but he didn't mean really disrespect but if you know that would bother you keep that in mind um kitty does have a realization and so it, it's starting to be touched on a little bit she is treating the chinese people like everyone else who is english and upper class you know is treating them and then she kind of realizes through this man she becomes friends with it's the only other um, English man that they meet on mainland China named Waddington and um, she realizes through her interactions with him that there's so much more to the Chinese culture and there's such a depth and a beauty to it um, that she kind of just excused before she just kind of you know um, wouldn't think about it and would just treat them like whatever, like uh, the other English people did. So she kind of, as part of her awakening process, she has a, you know, a glimmer of insight about the Chinese culture. So I'm glad that was included, but I, they could have gone farther with that. And uh, yeah, it's still not the best portrayal of China. Um, yeah, and so I don't. I don't think there's anything else I want to mention with this book, but it was truly wonderful and just made me think a lot and just um, had a depth to it that I didn't expect and uh, I just highly recommend this one. Really good. The second book I finished this month was The Good Earth by Pearl S. Buck and this was published in 1931 and I gave this three out of five stars on Goodreads. So this book is set in China and again maybe if you're looking for a book set in China maybe don't go to this one although the pain and veil like that wasn't the point of the book but this like you would go to this book for a portrayal of China anyways but I don't know how much I recommend it. So anyway, so this follows a man named Wang Lung, who is a peasant farmer. And uh, him and his family start out pretty poor, and then there's a brutal famine, and after the famine they end up becoming pretty rich. And uh, yes, yeah, so this is pretty much a family saga, and um, its biggest point is about is about the earth and the sustenance it brings us, and to not forget that um, you know, don't get caught up in what their money makes you richer for because it's really the earth that ultimately brings all of us our sustenance. Um, which, and that was a cool message, but I wished more from it, to be honest. So, this wasn't terrible, but I just wished more from it maybe like I said like the theme about the earth like I thought that was a cool theme but I wish um it had been touched on a lot more but there was just so much else to it and this is really a family saga and it was okay but I have just read much better family sagas you know um like this almost reminded me a bit of Steinbeck but Steinbeck's family sagas are just better and it's like, yeah, but this is set in China, but to be honest, like, yes, there are things that made it distinctly Chinese, but I kind of feel like this story could have been set anywhere, so I don't know if, in looking for a book about China, this was necessarily the best one to go to. I mean, the author, Pearl S. Buck, is not Chinese, or was not Chinese. Um, she was an American, and, her, and she was um, part of a family of missionaries, and so she went to China and saw these people. And I think she meant well in wanting to portray them, but um, she still is not Chinese, and I just really felt that while reading it. Um, yeah, and Wei Long just wasn't the best character. I mean, he grew on me as time went on, but he was hard to come to terms with um, 
this book was very difficult to read in terms of women. Like, I guess it shows you that in this period of Chinese history, like, life for women was rough. And, and thinking about it, it, it may be one of the roughest periods of history slash cultures for women to live in that I've I've read about, although again, because this isn't from an actual Chinese perspective, I guess, I'm not quite sure because she's seeing it as an outsider in. Um, but yeah, I think this would have been better if she didn't write this just from Wang Lung's perspective, perhaps as a family saga if she had written it by his whole family's perspectives, like alternating, because I think it would have been better if we had gotten some of, like, okay, it's a rough period for women at this time, but I would have liked to hear their voices because it was so rough just hearing Wang Lung's and his views on everything. Um, I felt particularly bad for his wife, Olan. She was a character that you just sympathize so much with, and uh, yeah, I just felt so bad for her. Wang Long has some redeeming moments, otherwise I would have disliked this book more. Um, but yeah, he's kind of rough. Anyways. So yeah, so like, it's okay, but I just think in terms of family sagas, there's better ones. I wish more diversity from the characters' voices. Um, and in terms of a book set in China, I don't think this was fantastic. And I think even its main theme could have been talked about more. So, yes, yeah, so it was. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't fantastic. Um, now, somebody gave this to me to read, and she really liked it and recommended it. Um, and that's great. And and all and I, I don't think she has like bad taste or something I just think maybe our tastes are different or maybe too if she hasn't read this in a while like her an older perspective of herself thought this was good maybe she won't like it as much if she reread it I don't know um I think it's a good lesson because um it's great to listen to reviews and get people's perspectives on books and if it really sounds like something you like then going out and picking it up is a good idea but just because somebody likes something if it doesn't appeal to you um i don't think it's a good idea to pick something up just solely because somebody else liked it there should be something when they're telling you about it that draws you to it and i didn't feel that way with this actually i want to read something else by this author that appealed to me more and uh, maybe would have had a different opinion if I had read that which appealed to me more. But now because I read this book, I kind of don't want to read anything by this author because I just think there are probably better books out there. Um, but yeah, so it's a good lesson. And to all of you who, because I'm giving you um, reviews and giving you my opinions on books, I guess keep that in mind as well. Like just because I like something doesn't mean you'll like it. But if something I'm talking about appeals to you in, in any which way, then I would pick it up. But if it's not something you would normally pick up or it's just like a whole is no appeal for you personally, but I liked it, don't just pick it up because I liked it. Oh, it's, a, it's just a viewpoint thing perhaps, you know, and everybody is so different and like I couldn't even explain to all of you like all the little things that sound appealing to me in a book because there's just all sorts of weird things that add up to like my taste, I suppose. Anyway, it's ramble. So, so yeah, this so this was just okay, and I don't recommend this. Um, go check out a different family saga. And as far as books in China, I don't know. I've read a few books set in China that are good, more like modern ones by like authors with Chinese background, but they're not Chinese. Um, but I never read a book actually by someone who is Chinese. And I do have books by people who are Chinese on my to read list, so I guess I will get to them. I mean, if you have any anything to recommend by an actual Chinese author, let me know. Like, I could already want to read it, and I just haven't gone to it yet. Um, but yeah, I just, I think it'd be better to do that than to read um, something by this author or this book. If you have read this book, anyone out there I'd be interested in your opinion of it actually um yeah and then surprisingly like Pearl S. Buck was the first woman to win the Nobel Prize I don't know how it works like do you win a Nobel Prize just as a person for all of your work or is it like she won it for this book in particular because if she did win this win it for this book in particular I just I don't know be confused I suppose but perhaps for the time it was written and this was important um 
in this day and age, I actually don't see much to it. Anyways, that is <laughs> my ramble about that. The third book I read this month was Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. And this was published in 1995, and uh, this is the first in a trilogy called the Farseer Trilogy. And this trilogy is set with other trilogies in like this greater series called The Realm of the Elderlings. Uh, yeah, and I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. So this was just such a joy to read. I'm so glad I read this. And this is the first time I've been so like hooked and addicted to a book in a long time. So, this book follows a boy named Fitz, and he is a prince's bastard son. And when he is discovered, he is sent to live with the royal family at a place called Buckkeep. And while there, he's kind of lonely. I mean, this book is kind of his coming of age, and it's kind of coming to terms with things. And then he seeks solace and, and this gift he has to connect to animals. Um, but even that's difficult. Um, he ends up um, studying to become the king's secret assassin and to also learn the royal family's secret magical power, I suppose. Um, yeah, so, yeah, this was just so addicting and so good. The story was fantastic. Um, it pretty much focused on fits and just the character development and relationships and like core politics um but it started to touch on kind of what was going on in the kingdom at large and i feel like that will be touched on later but we'll see um this is in kind of a traditional high fantasy medieval world um but i liked it although it just felt like there was something different about this book to be honest um, they did go to this one kingdom called, I think, the Mountain Kingdom at one point. And, uh, I feel like that setting was a kind of unique and a little bit different. So perhaps while the main part of this world is like the traditional medieval fantasy world, perhaps there will be other things about it that are more unusual and cool as it goes along. Um, I've heard that these are wonderful fantasy books if you're more of a literary fiction Fan, you know you like your books to be more literary and I can see how that is true um, yeah and the best thing about this book were the characters and their relationships that was just done so well I just can't even tell you <laughs> um, yeah and Fitz this was from Fitz's first person perspective and he was a wonderful first person perspective and I just grew to care for him and see things like him and just live his life and I can't wait to read more from him and all the other characters are just so wonderful as well and their relationship to Fitz like um Burridge the stable master uh he was kind of gruff but you can tell he cares a lot for Fitz um he reminded me of Hagrid from Harry Potter a bit um Chade the the guy that teaches Fitz um how to be an assassin was really interesting and I liked him as well. He was kind of like a Merlin-esque character, I feel like. Um, who else? His father's wife, Patience, was a really quirky female character. Um, the King's School was really intriguing and bizarre, and I think he plays a bigger part in later books, so I can't wait to learn more about him. Um, and then one of the princes, Verdi, who is Fitz's uncle, seemed really cool as well and kind and interesting and, um, I think it's an interesting choice. That's like, <laughs> I realize I say that a lot, but I don't know how else to describe things sometimes. Um, his relationship to Fitz grew as the book went on, so I can't wait to see where it goes from there because I really feel like they started to develop a strong bond. Um, what else? Oh, and a girl named Molly who lives in the village, and I think, I think Fitz, even in his, in his young age, may be a little bit enamored of her, but we'll see what happens to her. But she was interesting. She worked at a candle shop, and, um, yeah, and I'd love to learn more about her. So yeah, she's just a whole cast of interesting characters, and basically their relationship to Fitz is what is so interesting. And, yeah, I just 
wanted after reading this book I wanted to finish the trilogy and then read all the other trilogies and just read everything because this was so good and um yeah so I will definitely be finishing this trilogy and I as far as I know I want to keep reading so I might read all these books and you might get reviews on all of them except I guess I could go more in depth with this one than the other ones because it's the introduction uh, but yeah, I already have the second book on the way, Royal Assassin, so you can see that in my next wrap-up. I bet I'll read like one of these a month, so yeah, exciting stuff. And if you like fantasy at all or are into things being more literary but really are interested in checking out fantasy, then um, I highly recommend uh, reading this book. I don't know how soon it's going to continue, but read this book and you might be as hooked as I am. So I read or I finished one more book in July. Um, I was at a friend's house cat sitting for her and so I actually filmed a clip reviewing that book and so I like will insert it at this time. And uh, besides that book I've been reading The Tale of Genji. Um, for a good portion of July, which is very interesting, although it will be the longest book I've ever read, but it's well worth it. Um, and now it's August, and uh, I'm almost done with it, so it will be my August wrap-up, amongst other things as well. So you'll hear about that soon, but that's why I perhaps didn't read as much, or finish as much. Um, yeah, so here's my clip. Oh, and I inserted <laughs> some like clips of reading at the beach. I don't think they're very good clips. They're like crappy cell phone clips, but I thought I'd, I'd share with you anyway. So I think they will most likely be included. Hi everyone. So I'm sure I already kind of updated you as to why I'm in a different place um, reviewing a book. So I am staying at a friend's house. I am cat sitting for her slash house sitting and I'm near the ocean. Can you see that? Oh, this way. Um, can you see that strip of blue back there? Um, that's the ocean so I'm having like a like mini beach staycation at the same time. Um, and I am about to go to the beach right now but I wanted to update you on this book I just finished reading. So I'm in the middle of a really long book right now, The Tale of Genji, which I think will be my August wrap up because there's no way I'm going to finish it in the next couple days. Um, and because I'm at my friend's house, she loves mermaids. Like her whole house is decorated with mermaids and she has a bunch of mermaid books and every time I've been here before I'm like, oh, I really want to read one of her mermaid books. So I just decided to pick one up that looked good and uh, so that's what I did. So I kind of interrupted my tale of Genji for a day. I read this in a day to read a mermaid book. So that was uh, Sirena by Donna Jo Napoli and this was published in 1998 and I gave this four out of five stars on Goodreads. So yeah, I picked this up because it wasn't that long and this cover is really cool, but it was pretty enjoyable. So it's set in ancient Greece, which is a cool setting, and follows a mermaid named Sirena. And um, in this setting, mermaids are mortal and they can only become immortal if they mate with a man. So, Sirena, one day on this island, finds this injured soldier and um, she nurses him back to health and they fall in love. But it is complicated because um, her beloved is needed to help um, end the Trojan War. So, uh, Sirena must make, or Sirena one it is needs to make a big decision so I enjoyed the fact this was sent in ancient Greece that's probably the coolest thing about it and there was like inclusion of gods and goddesses which was really cool um Odysseus was in this so and yeah so there were just allusions to the Odyssey and both the Iliad I've read the Odyssey and I'm somewhat familiar with the Iliad so I really appreciated those allusions um 
Yeah, and for a story about a mermaid, it was pretty good. I really love mermaids, but it's so hard to find books about mermaids, to be honest. Um, and this was young adult, which I didn't know going into it. And I don't really like young adult, to be honest. Um, for a young adult novel, I thought this was pretty good. So that's why I gave this four to five stars. I was rating it more like as a young adult novel than like in comparison, like this four out of five stars. I wouldn't compare to like some more, something more literary that I've read or like a classic or something, but it was pretty good for what it is. Um, yeah, the, the love story in it took up a lot of the book. And like, I liked the love story, like I rooted for them. I just don't know how I felt about the way it ended. And because this is a young adult novel, I'm not sure if it was like, the greatest message for young women. Um, it was more like Sirena has to give up her happiness um, so her man can do what he needs to do. And I don't know, I found that rather unfair. Like, I get that message if it was more equal, like, relationships and um, each person's personal life needs to be, like, a, in a really good balance. And so I feel like the ending sort of touched on that, but only for him. And I feel like, you know, throughout history, that's a common thing that has happened. And women end up having to, like, give up stuff because their men want to go to whatever. Um... Yeah, so I don't know if that was like the greatest message. I feel like I'm so picky though. Like I really like, I talk about this stuff with a lot of books. Like, um, I don't know. It's hard to find the right balance of stuff because either it's like too old school and the woman's giving up too much or it's too repressed or like it's too, it swings the other way, you know, like a book I read last month. I feel like the message was that a woman didn't need a man and I was like, but what about love? Like, love and then people's personal lives are both important no matter what gender you are. And, um, yeah, and so I just get, like, picky, I guess, when I feel like things aren't in balance. So the ending was kind of weird, but I did relatively like the little story. I liked the ancient Greece setting. Like, it was pretty good for what it was. It was a quick read. Um, yeah, so it was fun reading a mermaid book. I'm just disappointed though because I do really like mermaids, but I find it's not something I find in like adult literary type fiction. Um, like after reading this, I saw like a bunch of recommendations, I looked through them all, and they're all young adult, which I don't like, and then there's like some newer stuff, which just to me looks a little weird and sketchy. Um, yeah, I guess, I don't know if any of you would know that or if that's your thing, but if any of you know of any, like, adult, like, literary books that have a mermaid theme, that'd be really cool. That would be something I would like. Um, yeah, so this was pretty good for what it was. Um, yeah, I mean, I only recommend this if you know going into it that it's young adult and that you're okay with that. Um, for what it is, it's pretty good. Um, so, yeah. That's my review of this, and now I'm going to go to the beach. <laughs> those are all the books I finished in July and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have read any of these books you want to recommend something you think I'd like, please comment below. Um, if you want to read any of my written reviews, I post them on Tumblr and Goodreads, so I'll put links to both those sites below if you want to follow me. On Tumblr I post some other things as well, mostly like quotes and stuff, so you can get a variety of things there. Um, I also have a Patreon account, so if you have any interest in supporting me, which is really helpful to me, you know, and uh, the more support I get there, I feel like the more I can do with this channel or have like more exclusive content, but we'll see. Anyway, so I hope you have a wonderful August, and I shall see you next month with my next wrap-up. Bye!